Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again as always. Thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Today we're going to be using the Mastercool 55900 AC refrigerant leak detection device on my 2011 Volkswagen Jetta. Now, I'm not sure if it has a leak. I suspect a leak. I don't know how much pressure we have in the system, so we're going to be hooking up our manifold gauge set to the car and we're going to start it and see how much pressure is actually available within this R134A system. Now this tool can test not only R134A, but also R1234YF for more of the more modern vehicles that went to that uh, type of refrigerant gas for cooling. So if you wanted to test one or the other, you could using this device. The only difference is, is that you're going to have to use a different setting on the tool. So um, with the low setting and the medium range setting, uh, we're going to be using it for the R134A. Now the low setting should be able to find a pretty substantial leak. If you cannot sniff it out using the low side setting, you might want to just go ahead and go up to the medium setting and that will help pick up some of those more smaller leaks. Now if it's the R1234YF system, then the tools instruction booklet recommends that you put it on the high uh, frequency setting. So for this purpose and testing out this car, we're going to be using the low and the medium style setting. First, let's go ahead and open the hood. Okay, now we're going to need to hook up our manifold gauges, find our ports, hook up the uh, gauge, open them up, start it up, and see how much pressure we currently have in the system. Uh, currently, the ambient temperature is about 90 degrees outside, so we should be able to find it if we have a leak. Okay, quick side note. I just took the caps off and somebody over tightened the crap out of the low side uh, AC cap. You don't need to over tighten it. You can actually bend or partially open the Schroeder valve within the system. You don't want to do that. Just snug it down lightly. It doesn't got to be overkill, okay? We're not trying to kill it. Also, you want to make sure the valves are closed prior to hooking up your manifold cages. And that none of the hoses are going to be interfering with the drive belt or pulley system within the vehicle. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my high and low side pressure valves. And again, you just go until you feel the refrigerant shoot up. You don't got to keep winding them all the way down. You'll feel it. You can hear it. I just heard it. <laughs> All right, so we do have at least 100 PSI worth of pressure. Now, this is where the vehicle's not on. So, in the instruction book for the Master Cool Tool, it says with the vehicle not in operation, you should have at least 50 PSI in order for this tool to work successfully, which we do. Okay, so typically, before you go ahead and start sniffing around and trying to diagnose the problem using this tool, you're going to want to do what's called an AC performance test. Uh, an old recommendation that I had from a college instructor is you'd want to put some kind of fan in the front in case you had any kind of blockage you could simulate airflow. So if there was any kind of a clog or anything, leaves tend to trap between the condenser and the radiator, you know, stuff like that. But to get as much airflow as you possibly can to get the maximum effectiveness out of your refrigerant system to put a, a fan or something in front of that. We're not going to do that. Some of the other AC performance tests that you can do is you can take a thermometer like this or a digital one, put it in each one of the vents starting from one side working your way over to see what kind of airflow you're getting or how effective the cooling is. So is it you know, 20 degrees cool, is it just 10, is it going the opposite direction and is it actually blowing hotter air instead of cooler air? So that would be part of the AC performance test. You'd want to go through all your different selections to make sure that you actually have, you know, vent, defrost, floor, uh, AC, max AC if it has it. 
So after using your mode selection, then you're going to want to use the uh, the amount of error that you're wanting. So starting from low, working your way to high. Is there enough changes? Do you hear any? You know, clicking from the inside. Like, is there a blend door actuator? Can you hear it? Is it that slipping teeth? Uh, that could be a reason. You might check the cabin air filter to make sure it's not clogged up full of debris. Simple things like this first. Um, you might want to make sure there's no napkins that got sucked against the blower motor. Just some real simple tests. But for right now, we're going to be testing out this tool. I suspect a leak, so let's go ahead and power on the device. Now it's going to start off with one LED, and then all the LED lights are going to light up. And as this tool begins to warm up, it'll slowly turn off one light at a time until you get to the bottom. And then what we're going to have to do is a calibration set or calibration reset. And to do that, we are to push and hold the HR LR button or peak button for high range, low range on the device until the lights go completely off and then it'll go through its uh, warm up cycle, which is what we're basically doing right now. And then we're going to release it. Okay, so now that the tool is co completely calibrated, we're on a low range. That's what we want. Now let's set the uh, high, medium, low. Okay, now that we're all calibrated, you can see right now we're at a low range with the LED being green. If we wanted to set it for a medium, it'll change colors. So there's medium. See it's both a green and a red, kind of making an orange color. High is going to be red. We're going to leave it on low. Alright, so this may be kind of hard to see, but I have my low side pressure port here and my high side pressure port down here. And we're going to take the sniffer and it says to keep it about 3 eighths above whatever it is that you're trying to sniff out. You don't want to touch anything with it like the if it does have any kind of oil or anything you don't want to touch it because it'll contaminate the tip and it'll mess up the calibration so the idea is to kind of keep some distance between it and just kind of sniff around now we're going to go by the compressor side oh let me come around now we're going to go down to the compressor side Usually, if it blows a front seal, we should be able to get to the front and see that as well. We don't appear to have any issues there either. Now, let's follow this one going back towards the expansion valve. on the back of the firewall. Alright, so now we're going to come down here by where the evaporator core would have been. Kind of snip around. Alright, so now that we're in the car, we got the vehicle running. Uh, we got our thermometer in the vent and it is clearly hotter in the car than it is outside. We're probably at about 110, 115 degrees. I got the AC set on max uh, for full vent and on recycle, uh, recirc. Now we're going to take the uh, master cool sniffer and what we're going to do is we're just going to go by the vents where, where the air is coming out. Alright, so either it's picking something up or it just doesn't like having that much air coming at it. All right, so you can see right now, we got about 50 PSI on the low side and about 160-ish on the high side. Notice how the gauges are staying completely still and they're not cycling. So that means that the AC compressor 
clutch is not engaging or disengaging. Right now it looks like it is engaged. Let's watch it for a minute and see if it disengages. No change as of yet. Oh, look at that. You gotta love that. So, see service information for details as far as what fuse and relay is what. Uh, I suppose we could take a test light at this point and test fuses. Alright, so we got our super fancy Harbor Freight Special here. Uh, we don't have a clue as to what fuse is for what because uh, we have to consult service information. Right now I'm just going to be looking for a good ground. For this I'm just going to choose an engine ground, a bolt off the valve cover. Oh, what's that? A little bit of noise from the tensioner, that's right, I remember that now. Alright, so we got a good ground, let's go ahead and start testing our fuses. Okay, power on all sides. None of these uh, bigger fuses look like they're blown. The only thing left we have right now is this relay. And I suspect that that's probably gonna be our fuel pump relay, but we'd have to look up service information. Oh my God, you gotta be kidding. Look at this, completely random. I swear to God, this thing was not blowing cold at all. And now look, we're blowing that around. We're still above 50 degrees. Let's turn it up another notch. Just randomly it starts blowing cold. I don't know. Let's give it a few minutes. All right, so learned a couple things and also, think I might still have a problem, but uh, either it's intermittent or I'm missing something from this the piece of the puzzle here. So, the pressures to me looked pretty normal for the exception that it wasn't cycling on and off like I've seen with uh, other vehicles and watching the compressor engage and disengage. To me, it seemed like the compressor was on all the time because I've seen a compressor where it's locked up or, or it's completely out of refrigerant where it's not cycling on and off as it should. This one seemed like it was on all the time. The condition that we ran into using this tool, so I think this is probably my bad. Um, the INT slash WT actually is for uh, conditions such as excessive air turbulence or accidental touching of the probe or blowing one's breath at the probe trigger interference detector. So I think you can still sniff out the vents, but you're probably gonna have to keep it on low, cool, and you're gonna wanna keep some more distance uh, from it. Uh, obviously, if you can get up under the dash, that's gonna be a better way of going about it. So, but that was what that weird that extra beep that we had going on was from was because of the amount of wind that was coming through the vents. So it did seem like it was blowing cold all of a sudden, which is really weird because it wasn't blowing cold at all uh, when I first got it. Um, I haven't driven it since. I've got other things kind of going on. It's for the wife anyways. Uh, but she hasn't really had any complaint, nor has she brought it up. I just told her I didn't think the AC worked, so I don't think she's been using it. So no cycling of pressures. We're blowing 30 degrees cooler than ambient, which I believe is about, that's about normal range if I'm not mistaken. And uh, didn't sniff out any leaks. We had it set on medium, I think, no, low. I had it set on low. Pressures just didn't look bad, I don't know. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool tool and uh, I'm gonna need to use it a lot more, get more familiar with it before I can give you the full honest review. But what I like about it so far is that I can actually test two different systems, both 
the R134A and the R1234YF. So the fact that it can do both is a huge plus because I know a lot of other companies, they only sell one or the other. So it's kind of cool that they incorporated uh, both those gases in this tool. That's all I got for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers to those of you who have your beers. I hope you enjoyed your entire weekend and are getting ready for Monday. Mondays. And we just skip Monday and go right to Tuesday. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Doses.